the government want to silence me and they want to delegitimize my voice and block any action I can take against this conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, which has murderous intent. They're trying to silence me and they're hoping everyone falls into line. And so far, that's been the case. The fact of the matter is, if nothing's done about this predicament that I'm in, which is malicious and has victimised me over a long time, I am going to die. Um, I've now received death threats on my phone and the system and the criminals know where I am. So my life's in imminent risk of... Um, literally being murdered. Now, um, there is also the possibility that I will die by suicide, but I want one thing to be very clear, that it's not mental illness to blame for my death, and nor is it drugs that is the cause of my death. The cause of death if I suicide will be an elongated, systemic and political persecution that's literally gone on for years. Um, it's attacked my prosperity. It's attacked me individually. It's literally violently beat me up, run me over with a car. It's attacked my reputation. It attacked my business. And um, in actual fact, the, this persecution has been going so long that I've already suicided um, and survived from this political persecution which consciously and maliciously redacts all of my prosperity or any money coming to me and destroys the structures I need to be able to make money. Um, now in that suicide attempt in February 2021 I was revived from a certain death. I shouldn't even be here. Um, now um, not a tear was shed about that and um, People are malicious in their intentions to cause me harm. They can't literally come in here and slice my head off, but they will attack via proxy of other agencies and government agencies and statutory authorities. And their methods are always the same, to delay, deny, defer my valid complaints and delegitimize the vast amounts of evidence that I have that um, demonstrate this um, phenomenon when it comes to me of this political scapegoating and persecution. It's not right, it's not just, and I'm not the bad guy. In actual fact, there are dozens of public officials and all politicians and just about every lawyer, I've never had a lawyer, um, who would be complicit in acting to make decisions which would see my justice never eventuate. And before you think that these death threats aren't real, just consider this. I've filmed the Secret Service outside of my house. So um, literally been so financially persecuted I was run out of town by police threatening the Mental Health Act. That's akin to an angry mob chasing an innocent victim literally out of town away from his home and his possessions. Now um, you know would you kill someone for a million dollars would you? Well this is a list of um, approximate things that have happened to me since about um, 2004 when my 
Autobiography, Recovered Not Cured, A Journey Through Schizophrenia, was published by Alan and Nunwin in a move that exploited me, and then the Herald Sun publicly humiliated and vilified me with a, a heading to the story calling My Descent Into Madness, How Schizophrenia Stole Richard McLean's Mind. And then, shortly after, The Age, where I worked, and I love that job, fired me. They illegally terminated me, and they said that I'd resigned. I hadn't. Um, it was a way to excommunicate me. Have a listen to these um, things. So the unfair termination settlement from the Age newspaper, that's 300 grand. I've got an outstanding work cover settlement from 2004. That's another 300 grand. There's an incorrect TPD payment from 2008 because I paid for eight units of cover instead of one. That's about 500 grand. There's a medical malpractice settlement in 2017, which there was unfortunate evidence for that was silenced and even the transcript of that silenced. That's another 300,000. There's my HCF income assist settlement in 2021, in which Sheena, Jack and HCF have literally just blacked me out and banned me from calling them and got a person to put a violence order in, in order to um, arrest me if I do so much as even email them or contact them. I've got evidence to suggest my medication, my diagnosis was not um, of concern um, in the leading up to that claim. And that's another $75,000. There's a work cover settlement in 2021. That was potentially worth $750,000 if I had an impairment of 100%. Now, I had evidence that I was employed by DHS, but they rejected it on account of I wasn't an employee for the purposes of the SRC Act. And as it stands, um, the government said no, then the government got a lawyer to defend the decision, and it was upheld at another government agency, the AAT. And this is called corruption. That's called who gets the most money and power wins the argument. Um, so that was a potential $750,000. There's provisional payments from work cover in 2021, which I never got. There's another 50 grand. There's a business insurance payout in 2021 uh, with the, um, when my business was maliciously destroyed. That's at least 100 grand. Then there's my former partner, Stefan Isonides, who worked for ASIO and who owes me a fair equitable settlement. And this underpins all my persecution because no government agency, including the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet and ASIC and Centrelink and the Tax Office and the Ombudsman and the Attorney General's Office will even acknowledge that relationship existed. And that's the key thing in how I've been excommunicated from the Australian government and how I've never got any justice, like being just banned at the Australian Financial Complaints Authority. That's like being banned from Centrelink or the police. That's an abhorrent victimisation and a malicious way in which my finances have been redacted. He had a million dollars in super. He owes me half of that. That's $500,000. Um, there's a settlement for my cognitive brain impairment sustained inside a hospital from a suicide attempt, Werribee Mercy Hospital, when they owed me a duty of care. Um, that's an abhorrent cover-up. Well, look, I know no one cares for me. That's fine. But um, no tears were shed when I even committed suicide, and it was just deemed that I got over it. I've never got over it, and it's never been acknowledged. That's a brutal oppression. There's another $250,000. I could sue for my business website being maliciously destroyed by government-linked agency Micron21 who deleted my website, all its backups and its emails um, in one fell swoop, blocked me and said, you're no longer a customer. That's like getting Telstra.com and just wiping it off the face of the earth. It's not right. And, uh, you know, no one, um, they did it with impunity. That's the problem when you're a scapegoat is that no one will stick up for you and people can treat you badly with impunity and they get away with it because no one will stand your ground. So I could claim for a VCAT for loss after my worldly possessions were destroyed. I was locked up in a hospital for three whole months. And while I was there, Werribee Mercy Hospital and the police oversaw Hung Ho of Edithale, go to my home, get every single thing that I own, my photos, my clothes, my bed, my books, my desk, and took it all to the tip. So there was about $100,000 worth there, but I can't get justice there. 
Now, here's a good one. I was actually banned at AFCA. It sounds absurd, and it is absurd. How can I be banned from a statutory government agency? They knew in 2020 that I needed financial help, and they had, by their own policy, six weeks to come to that determination for a financially marginalised person. But mine took over two years. Tim Goss, Head of Service Delivery at AFCA, delayed, denied, deferred, this um, determinations that would, which would have seen me out of poverty and that was a malicious and conscious way in which they could damage me and ultimately now they've banned me and i've spoken to the ombudsman the ombudsman says they cannot investigate um, things at AFCA. so you see how i'm locked out now um, i suffered detriments of about two million dollars um, being banned from Africa. so there you go that's a detriment the cdd CDDC scheme at the Department of Finance is supposed to compensate for um, corrupt or, or ineffective uh, decisions of statutory agencies, but the Department of Finance told me that you will never get any money out of the Department of Finance and rejected my claim. Even my claim for, for, for a settlement um, which would see me not speak and would see me just be afforded the very basic things in life, a house, a computer, a car, food medicine and freedom from victimization but they rejected to do that and they have sent me further down the rabbit hole of actioning my intelligently designed poverty and that's been really shit um there's detriments over 1.5 million after an insurance settlement of the australian super was free kicked to the opposition um by liz lindsberg at the australian human rights commission that decision was not impartial, it was not fair, and the AH, AH, Australian Human Rights Commission were the body tasked with coming to a conciliation, but they free-kicked it to the opposition. That was a decision that cost me $1.5 million, and you can see that, um, that interview on um, this YouTube channel. I record things not because I'm an extortionist, but because I have to literally check that my reality is happening. And I suspected there was a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, and there absolutely is. So I've also got money coming to me to pay for my accommodation blocked from arriving at the NDIS or A. Um, that's another $25,000 that would see me actually have a home or somewhere to be. Um, there's my child sexual abuse redress case from Department of Social Security, it's overseen by. Delayed, denied, deferred. That could be 25 grand. It'd be helpful now if that came through. But as we know, I'm a failed whistleblower at the DSS and I'm a failed whistleblower at the NDIS. And I'm also a failed whistleblower at the Ombudsman and the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet. And this is all despite being a public official. So you can absolutely see that um, these decisions that are systemic and political are designed to make me poverty stricken and to cause me harm. So I had another case at VOCAT, a case for child sexual abuse, um, my own sexual abuse, um, and that was cited by a magistrate as doomed. And I thought, well, that's colourful language for a sexual abuse survivor. But she said it, I was doomed to fail, and that's probably worth 25 grand, but that's just the result of, again, the corrupt legal system and the corrupt, corrupt system of government. Um, There's another VOCAT case for a violent affray in which I was hospitalised with, with slashes in me and broken bones for intervening in saving a member of the public. Um, and that was rejected. Um, I probably would have got 25 grand for that, but um, VOCAT pinned it on me as the principal aggressor. And um, this is despite clear evidence from the dancing dog and the police had on video of the affray already well underway before I intervened. And I tried to get my freedom of information from police but they just didn't give the video. That would have been significant evidence to get that over the line. So there's another 25,000. Um, I could be compensated for literally being run over by a car, <coughs> most likely a government vehicle when I was on the run from police and they literally ran me out of town, threatening me with the Mental Health Act after I was poverty stricken um, and chasing me literally up the coast, away from my home. So, um, that car, well, just one thing. So that um, I went out. The, I was staying in a hostel, hiding with my crystal, my husky, and um, I walked out the front to, 
take her for a walk and a car literally mowed us down in the street and they knew that we couldn't call the police because we were trying to escape the police. So in that way, this was intelligently designed to show me and demonstrate to me they can act with impunity and get me anywhere. Speaking of that, there was also um, compensation for me being violently attacked inside Werribee Mercy Hospital by a not so undercover government thug who actually had my tattoo, a very unique tattoo, printed on his t-shirt. I said, wow, that's weird, when I went into the ward and then he proceeded to attack me. So this is a way that they've infiltrated the hospital system with violent criminals and they've literally attacked me from the inside. Um, I mean, how much is a conspiracy, how much is compensation for approval and demonstrable conspiracy to pervert the course of justice causing my death? Um, it wasn't mental illness that caused my suicide last time and it won't be mental illness that causes it this time, but a prolonged systemic government abuse and victimization in which people act by proxy in order to rob all my prosperity and cause me to be desperate. So I think a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice is a pretty wild thing. This case should really go to the High Court, but I mean, what chance have I got? I can't go to police, I'm a rejected whistleblower, and I've never in my 50 years had a lawyer, apart from John Boyle of MD Law, who came in close, sidled up with me, got my evidence, dumped me before my AAT hearing, and um, now is extorting me for $50,000 in order to um, get my evidence back off him. So good on you, John. You've got a brain damaged, homeless, um, uh, mentally ill man, and come in close, got his evidence, then charged him a fee to get it back. Good work. Um, so there's probably got to be compensation for the whitewashing of the tragedy um, of my suicide by dozens of high-ranking public officials and the conspiracy. And you know what? All public officials have a responsibility to act ethically within the Public Service Act. And this hasn't happened universally when it comes to me. It's not just the case that I'm ignored over and over again, but my dozens, thousands of emails pointing out my oppression has been met with a point of neglect and that's a way of silencing me and it actually causes me distress because to not be valued or validated or have your story acknowledged really does cause harm in that it's gaslighting. And as we know, gaslighting is a methodology which narcissistic abusers use in order to um, make their victims suffer. So there's a few million dollars there, at least. Um, I think the Cornelia Rao case, of, um, when she got a few million dollars for the for the medical field neglecting her would be chicken feed compared to my case. So there's literally millions and millions of dollars and the government want to silence me and they're going to do it and they are doing it and they have done it. And um, there is a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. I do have a mental illness, but that doesn't exclude the conspiracy is still actually happening. And further to that, um, it's... It's, it's been a brutal oppression of me and they will kill me before they admit liability of all these injustices and monetary amounts that have been intelligently and maliciously redacted and removed from my life. Um, and this abuse of me has been systemic and it's been political. Underpinning this is Steve Isonides, my former partner, who was with me for five years and exploited me and who worked for ASIO, and no government agency, including the Office of Prime Minister, the Tax Office, Centrelink, where he also got a carer's pension, or any other agency, will even admit that the relationship occurred. And that's including IGIS, who investigate ASIO, and also the Commonwealth Ombudsman. And that's where Prime Minister Anthony Albanese directed me, first to the Attorney General's office, where Mark Dreyfus has never acknowledged my calls, or emails, and his office have referred me to IGIS and the Commonwealth Ombudsman. IGIS already know about it, and the Commonwealth Ombudsman have rejected my public interest disclosure, despite me being a former public official and the spouse of an ASIO employee, and they've rejected all further correspondence. The death threats that I'm getting are real. If you know, Steve Isonides lost apparently a million dollars in embezzlement due to my whistleblowing, 
and has now threatened to kill me and my dog rather than take responsibility for his own corrupt finances when he embezzled over a million dollars in an offshore tax haven. If, if, you, if you don't believe that um, death threats are happening for me, just consider that one man, Steve, has convinced the entire government to not acknowledge that relationship, which was a fact of life, which has been seen and acknowledged by all of my friends and family. <coughs> and not one person has sided with me and not one person in the government will um, act to even value or validate that um, experience. It's a really profound way that he's manipulated an entire political system to be on his side. And if he can do that, he obviously can find me and he obviously can get people to sort me out. And the government would also wish this because it's a multi-million dollar case. And these multi-millions of dollars um, will never get across the line unless this story is acknowledged by someone somewhere. So I am going to die. Um, I, have no, I have no home. I have no barely food. I have no medicine. I have no care. I have no GP. I have no psychiatrist. I have no psychologist. And I've been in three different hospitals over the past two years. And all of those agencies and um, hospital systems, Worry Mercy, Casey Health and Daniel, have washed their hands of me. That's because they're all too afraid to stand up for the truth. And I'm a truth speaker and I'm a truth seeker. And no one person could be seen to be standing up for me because it will expose them as people who are really responsible for the vilification of dozens of public officials, lawyers and politicians. I'm right out on my own here. I'm going to die. Um, I could be murdered imminently. They're really trying to threaten me and make it hard for me. I get calls like, you and your dog are gonna fucking die, watch your back, that kind of thing. And I just wanna say unequivocally again, that if I die or even if I suicided, it won't be mental illness nor drugs that is the cause of death. And this story has been documented on a website. One of my websites, the government keep destroying them. And all of the evidence is on there. And it is unequivocally, unmissably provable as a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. And I have demonstrated it with facts. So if I die, my cause of death will have to be investigated by the coroner for the coroner's report. And it's only then that we'll finally find out that it is the case that a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice existed, that there are many, many malicious people who wish me harm, and that, um, that no one has stood for me. And I just want to say that when there's a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice, which victimises and scapegoats a single person, um, it has to rely on that person's in a circle and in a sanctuary to become undone. And that's absolutely happened. Um, my family won't barely speak to me. They won't intervene in this political quagmire that has happened. And my sister and brother, Brad and Jody McLean and Bongetti, won't even acknowledge me, neither will Bruce McMaster. And um, I've just been begging, because that's what I do, beg for food and cigarettes. Um, I've just been um, demanding that Dad read my website and do something about it, but he didn't. And, you know, I wouldn't need a website or a YouTube channel if I had someone to talk to. So I said this to him on the text. I just texted this to Dad. You still didn't read the website. Dad, can you put $30 into my account at Bendigo so I can get some cigarettes, please? I will pay you back. I'm about to get justice and this malicious conspiracy exposed. If I get no traction with it, without food, medicine, a supportive family, a home, a job, or rights, or access to the law, or equality before it, then a person will die of neglect. And I'm going to die. If I do, the conspiracy is documented on my website, and a report will have to be investigated for the coroner. They will try and blame mental illness and drugs to exonerate dozens of public officials, lawyers, politicians, 
and society from any wrongdoing or liability for their malicious intentions to do me harm and rob me by redacting all of my prosperity over years. The family will then have to admit that they didn't do enough for me and literally rejected me outright, um, exactly like the government has excommunicated me as not an equal member of society. This text will also be published that if I die, you will be shamed as a family who have or had forsaken me. I'd appreciate the $30 now. If only you had stood up for me, I'd be a multi-millionaire and I would, not, I, would, I would have helped you out in your life. I've tried to offer you $100,000 for simply just getting me a lawyer or do something to get this over the line, but you have not and you won't. In that way, you and the family are just as bad as my oppressors, such as the government, for causing me harm from point of neglect. You complain about giving me money and ask what I do with it, and you also say money is not an issue and you don't want money from me. If money is such an issue for you to give to me, why didn't you help me get justice? After all, I'm a human being and your son. My human rights abuses have been documented by an NDIS worker and it was never signed off on and um, the Australian Human Rights Commission, who were tasked especially with that um, investigation, refused to do anything with it. And I went on, if no, if no intervention, if there's no intervention, I'm going to die and I'll be reporting that via all, that via all of your neglect, you actually wanted me to die and that you were well aware and conscious that without basic necessities for an individual, um, you can't survive or have a chance at surviving. If you want me to die, keep neglecting to help me because you're doing a great job as my infiltrated inner circle that is causing me great harm and distress. That's what the conspiracy want. They want me dead. And that's the text I sent to my dad today on 27th of October, 2023, in order just to get some money for some cigarettes. And the government um, really has done the absolute, utter, bare minimum for caring for me. I can't describe the detriment and the horror of my existence over years and years. This is not permissible to go on. I've actually got the evidence of, I'm um, just looking at it here, um, I've got the evidence of, um, of the Office of Prime Minister and Cabinet refusing to acknowledge um, the, um, the, um, all the documents um, that are pertaining to Steve and I's relationship and how that key fact underpins all of my persecution. And I've got letters from the Prime Minister, Attorney General's Department, I've got um, lease agreements. I've even got um, evidence of Steve and I being in a financial relationship together because we've got bank balances in each other's name. <coughs> what I've also got is evidence that he's been stalking me on Grinder, that he's apparently done for embezzlement, million dollars, and he wants my husky and me dead. It's not okay that this persecution of me continue to occur. And it's not okay after this has been published that um, that no one will act for me. Like, I just can't accept that because I actually have um, people threatening to kill me and the stakes are getting really high. I've had to remain really strong and really steadfast in what I know to be real. And this conspiracy is absolutely real. Now, um, I just want to say that I've really tried um, to get help everywhere, but now having been excommunicated from the government, um, there's no hope of me moving forward in any equitable, fair or reasonable way. And I actually made a, a statement to the National Anti-Corruption Commission, and you can see all this evidence on my YouTube channel, um, that um, after uh, three months, uh, they refused to even acknowledge it or um, give me an outcome. And the, the NACC, when it comes to me, is actually corrupt. That's the way a person's victimised and that's the way a person's treated differently, um, especially after making a complaint 
um, of a malpractice case in which there was unfortunate evidence, but it was legal evidence, and that Mr. Russell Ball, a man and a lawyer who informs government policy and advises the Ombudsman, has silenced at the Health Complaints Commissioner, the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, the Police, IBAC, the Victorian Inspectorate, APRA, NHP, OPC, and the Ombudsman, who he informs. Now, this evidence is still there, it's online, and this is called corruption. I'm being attacked by um, very powerful, key political stakeholders, and these people um, act with impunity, and they act with much power and enormous privilege, and they do so from a, in a cowardly way, from behind the scenes, by proxy, and they get other people to act to my detriment. This is what's happened to me. Here's another death threat. I've got to go. Can you please, someone acknowledge the story?